Okay, so it's been a while since we did that first intro show back a couple months ago. Um, so what do you say we get going on it? Go grab something, take some notes. There'll be plenty to write down today. And uh, the topic of this episode is your yearly training plan. So, thinking broadly about a typical season, it only makes sense to have an appropriate plan in place to help you achieve your goals. So, today we're going to talk about this, like I said, from the annual plan perspective, as opposed to, say, the shorter month-long, week-long, or daily plans, uh, which we will eventually get to in a different episode. Uh, So, how do you set up a year-long plan with maximum efficiency? Well, first you're going to have to do um, three specific things. First, you're going to have to do an honest but not negative evaluation of your strengths and weaknesses as as a shooter right now. Um, You may find that the areas you can make the most improvement on have to do with, say, structural position basics or maybe things like match endurance or performing under high high pressure scenarios, whatever you've experienced in the past um, that you can draw on. So identify what it is that you're good at and what it is that needs the most improvement and then list them in order of importance. Um, In your training, you're going to be focusing on those areas that could use the most improvement as to have the greatest positive effect on your performance. And then you can get to the other ones once you kind of narrow down those major areas that could have the most improvement. So the second thing is to develop a way to record the results of your training and your progress. Um, remember what gets measured gets improved, so get a shooter's diary and keep detailed notes on what you work on, what your plan is, and the progress you make. Um, I personally also like to keep an Excel spreadsheet with all of my match scores, as well as a training log on the same program where I can just track how many hours I spend in different positions every day in my training and how many shots I take because I think that's interesting. But doing all that helps me personally keep on track and be accountable for myself. Um, If you have to enter your training performance in a log every day, I find that, at least for myself, I'll be more motivated to actually get down to the range and do it. Um, The third and last thing is to get yourself a list of important competitions that you plan to participate in in the coming season. Um... Also make sure to mark down where any other kind of intermediate competitions are that you plan to participate in uh, so you can be ready for them when the time comes. Um, Now you need to decide what your ultimate goal match is for the season. For at least this example, you're going to want to pick one ultimate goal match at the end of the season uh, where you really want to perform your best. That's where you're going to focus all of your training on for basically the entire year. Everything else is just going to be a stepping stone to that point. Um, so, I mean, I remember as a junior, generally the biggest match of the year for me um, would be the USA Shooting National Championships in June. And I would start in September, my training, and I would schedule my yearly plan around peaking specifically for the national championships, um, like I said, with all those other matches being stepping stones and ways for me to evaluate my training up to that point and to be able to enact changes as a result of my performances until there. Okay, so those were the basic three things that we need to make our yearly plan or to start thinking about making our yearly plan. Um, But uh, let's get a little more specific now. So... What more specific factors should be considered when we plan our training in a more detailed way? Well, I found this list in my personal shooting diary, and there's quite a few things here. Um, So my list is physical training, technical training, mental training, tactical training, competitions, equipment, recovery, life experiences, volume and intensity of training, rhythm, environmental conditions, travel, media, and competition simulation. Now, I'm not saying, for example, that at the beginning of the season, you should be able to tell me that on, I don't know, March 22nd, you plan to shoot kneeling for exactly two hours and then go for a 45-minute run that afternoon. You don't have to have it planned out in that kind of detail, but you should be able to 
uh, you should be able to draw out a general outline for how much time and effort you'll be spending on these things throughout the season um, because a smart athlete will not be doing exactly the same thing the whole time. That's not going to help you peak. Um, a smart shooter is going to realize that they need to change things up as the season goes on in order, in order to prepare properly and have the peak performance they want at the time that they want. So let's get into the meat of all this. It has a very exciting name too, periodization. Okay, so it's not that exciting of a name, but the concept is very important to understand. Um, the idea is that we are going to break the training year into a few different periods or phases uh, that each have a different emphasis, with the main goal being to, of course, peak at your personal goal match for that season or year. Doing this correctly is not going to only help you achieve highly on that day, but it's also going to prevent overtraining and burnout throughout the season. Um, that itself is another very important topic that we're going to cover in another show. Um, but anyway, like I said at the beginning, get something to write on. Um, in fact, for this section, it might even be helpful for you to draw out a diagram so you can kind of visualize this idea. Um, all right, so there are three main phases in the yearly training plan, which can be further broken down into a couple more. Um, so the three main phases are the preparatory phase, which can be broken into the general and specific preparatory phases, the competitive phase, which can be broken into the more specific pre-competitive and main competitive phases, and the transition phase. So we'll start right from the top with the general preparatory phase. Um, this generally lasts from four to eight weeks, although each shooter will, of course, have to tailor it appropriately for themselves and their skill level. Um, here, the shooter's base skills and abilities are developed or reacquired if they've been on a break, for example. Um, the training state achieved in this phase provides a base for the higher intensity work that's going to be required during the later stages of training. Um, so here what we're going to be looking to do is a high volume of shooting with low intensity. In other words, you're going to spend a lot of time on the gun doing dry firing, holding, live firing, um, but not too much in terms of keeping track of scores or shooting practice matches or doing finals drills or other higher intensity work like that. Uh, also, during this phase, it's a good time to get your physical fitness bumped up and develop the muscular and cardiovascular strength that will give you more of an edge over other competitors when it comes time to really compete later in the season. Uh, this general preparatory phase is also the perfect time to integrate any new equipment, um, start training sessions with whatever you have the most problems with. Good athletes train what they do best, but great athletes train what they need the most improvement on. So always keep that in mind. All right, so now moving on to the specific preparation phase. This is only slightly different from the previous one. Again, this is generally four to eight weeks. Continue building your physical fitness base and uh, really start working on your sport-specific stamina. In other words, if, for example, you're a 3 by 40 small bore shooter, uh, simulate those time scenarios while shooting so that, you know, for example, you can stay down in a kneeling position for 45 minutes or an hour straight without having it bother you too much, that kind of thing. Um, also, this phase is when you can really dial down on those technical skills that you identified as weak areas in the general prep phase. Okay, so next are the two competition phases. And generally speaking about these two together, the competitive phases are where you take the skills you worked on so far and apply them to competition scenarios. You're going to be refining your technique and match strategies and tactics and mental and physical factors during, during this time. So in the pre-competitive phase, which is generally mm, four to six weeks or so, um, you'll still have relatively high volume, but you'll start to really increase the number and degree of higher intensity work. By this time, you should really be shooting a few matches and applying the skills you've been working on in training. Um, after each competition, then you can evaluate your performance and how you did on those specific skills you've been working on, and you can identify what could be improved and then apply that to your practices. So, for example, if, say, in your last match, you ran the clock down to the last two minutes, um, 
tactically speaking, this isn't a very good plan because running out of time like that can be very stressful. And if you have some kind of equipment malfunction or something, you might just run out of time and not get all of your shots off. And frankly, not shooting all of your shots before the time is up is just unacceptable. So if you're a shooter who's experienced this problem, uh, you can identify it and prioritize time constraints in your training. You can force yourself to shoot, say, 10 quality shots in 6 minutes, or to shoot a match course in practice with tighter time constraints than you would normally have in an actual competition, so that you get used to that feeling of moving along a little quicker, so that you have time to spare if you ever really need it in a competition. Uh, an important final note about the pre-competitive phase is that you as a shooter are still building during this time, and competition results are only one criteria for how you are progressing. Don't let a few low-scoring matches discourage you. Uh, just identify what you can do to improve uh, based on where you might have struggled. Uh, don't look at matches just as competitions, but also see them as training opportunities. So now we come to the main competitive phase, and this is within those last couple of weeks before your big goal match. Uh, it's during this time that you're really, you're really focusing on high-intensity practices with lesser volume. Don't make any big changes to what you're doing, just like small tweaks to things when necessary. Finalize your match tactics and strategies, and make sure you have good match ammunition. Um, shoot match and final simulations and do other high intensity training games uh, by the way I have a lot of ideas for these that I'll probably have in an upcoming show but if you want to know right away just get a hold of me um, but build that confidence by acknowledging your preparation and that you train regularly under stress and you're therefore ready for these big matches and when it comes time for your goal match um, what you're going to want to do is taper off in the few days or the one week before. Uh, don't, stop, don't stop shooting entirely, but definitely lessen the load. Uh, by doing this, you're removing any fatigue that you have potentially built up, and it's really going to allow you to do better on that, on that specific competition day. So on the official training day before the match, uh, whatever you do, do not shoot a match course. This is a major mistake that a lot of people seem to do. For some reason, they think, oh, well, I should shoot an entire match the day before my match. It doesn't make any sense. Don't do that. All your job is on the training day is to make sure that your equipment is functioning appropriately and for you to get used to the range conditions. If you're shooting on electronic targets, never even bother to take your monitor off sliders. Shoot an odd number of shots, like 14 or 23, so that you can't extrapolate what your score would be. The official training day is not a time to build new skills. Get in the range, get used to the range, shoot a few shots, and get out. Uh, for me, personally, like for an air rifle match on the official training day, my entire time in the range, including setup and takedown, is maybe 25 minutes. Now, that's probably a little bit on the short end compared to what many others do, I'm, I am a very strong advocate of doing it that way. Um, you can psych yourself out by looking at your scores too closely or shooting too many shots and just generating worry, and you don't need it. Uh, you just you followed a well-thought-out plan all season long, and you're totally ready to go. So for the actual match, just go in, follow your match plan, and let yourself shoot good shots. Don't force it. And don't worry, we'll get more into details of match day planning and the mental game in the future. All right, so this just leaves us with the transition phase. This is where you take time off. Make sure you do not overlook the importance of this phase or you're gonna be burned out at the beginning of the next season and you're not gonna have any energy or motivation. Uh, more on that in a later episode. So the last thing I wanna hit on concerning this annual plan idea is the relationship between volume and intensity. These two things have an inverse relationship and they reverse throughout the course of shooting season. So at the beginning, you want high volume and low intensity. In other words, a lot of shots, but don't keep track of your scores or anything like that. As you move on, you can train a little less because you'll have the fundamentals down, but you're going to want to increase the intensity of your training 
and you're going to want to do more match simulation as you get into shooting more and more competitions. This is the main idea of what this entire annual plan system builds off of. It's worked for a lot of people in a lot of different sports, and if you take the time to think it all through, keep track of your progress, and adjust to your needs, it's going to work for you too. Be warned, however, that it is quite a bit of work to keep up on this, which may dissuade many of you from bothering to do it. Um, just be aware that the dedication to this kind of thing is what's going to separate the best from the rest. Anyway, so if you have any questions about this topic, or if you have any suggestions for future topics, feel free to send me a message at olympicshootingpodcast at gmail.com. I'll talk to you guys all soon.